on this episode of Sundown Evening Tea with me and Isla Shuja, we're sitting with the one and only, the host of Full Disclosure, uh, Ms. Sababano Malik. Uh, welcome! I'm super Woo! excited! I'm excited! <laughs> and um, so just a little background, Saba is a comedian, she is a journalist, and she's an RJ, which is pretty cool in my book, so <laughs> you gotta check her out on Full Disclosure. Uh, five to seven on Saturday and Sunday, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Very right. <laughs> All right. So, like, let's just dive into the conversation. Um, can you tell me a bit about your background? Yeah. So, I am an American Pakistani. I was born and raised in Maryland, yeah. um, Potomac, Maryland, little city, just about twenty minutes outside of DC. Huge Pakistani community. So, like, I didn't. I grew up like literally Full, here, yeah. but there. And I, my family did a lot of back and forth with Pakistan, so I spent some significant portions of my life here, there. Um, like any true Pakistani immigrant story, I wanted to be a doctor because <laughs> my parents told me from a very young age, and I actually was very into it. Yeah. Like one of those nerds who went to like medical camp and stuff in really? high school. Yeah, I learned oh, how to God. suture when I was like 15. Okay. And then when I was in university, I was like, oh. I don't know. Like I thought doctoring was just like that hurts. I'm gonna stitch it and send you home. <laughs> And then eventually I moved towards fashion and I worked as a buyer for a little bit, but then just due to life and choices, I wound up moving to Pakistan a little over six years ago. And Alhamdulillah, I found a career in media and then it's just sort of built up and I'm now here, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, With so you? how was your, uh, you know, transition from the American, sorry, they see American lifestyle to a full, they see, you know, lifestyle? I mean, I'll, like, so I lived in Pakistan once when I was a kid, when I was in seventh and eighth grade, so around like 11 to 13 years old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, yeah. And I would say it was pretty shocking. I mean, I'll be honest, I feel like Pakistan's gone under a lot of changes, and like you land and you're just like, you don't even recognize the place really. But comparison is the thief of joy. And this is true fact. So, like, you can't sit here and be like, well, I'm gonna blow my brains out in Bindi because this isn't like Washington, <laughs> D.C., it's obviously not gonna be the same. But there's so much magic in Pakistan that you might not get somewhere else. And I think that, that I try to focus on that while being obviously critical yeah. of some things. I'm here because of Twitter. No, but you know, but it's good. I mean, also getting to know my family. I'll say that's been pretty amazing to not just my parents as adults and as friends, but my nani and other people that we only got to see in like small, small Like when you portion. would come back for summer vacations yeah, or something like that. Yeah, so we like would that. do yeah. winter break here. So we were one of those Pakistani families that like, don't ask me if I've been to Disney World, I'm not, none of that. It was Pakistan or here. Like my family, they wanted to see their parents, obviously. Yeah. And that's what we did. And I just sat in my nani's basement. For like I mean, like, do you have years. any like interesting memories from your nani's basement or something? I remember one winter we saw the movie Scream like 27 times. Cause I was like the only one at home. I remember. Oh my God. Yeah. So you, did you like not <laughs> so you're like, you're I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. And like, I just remember because it was just exciting to sit together. And I feel like you're like getting to know your cousins that you don't get to see every day. And this is like pre-internet, pre-WhatsApp. We're talking like 90s. So it was just, I just remember looking, like I tell you this to my cousins now that I just would look at them and be like, wow, these are the most like beautiful women I've ever seen. And then like, shawar kameezes and this and that. And just, yeah, good stuff. Getting to eat chips also, french fries here like all the time. That was Did fun. you like put chocolate sauce on it? No, no, but I did like the ketchup here when I was growing up, like how it's like extra sugary. I was into it. Yeah. Now okay, I'm, I'm not a fan of ketchup. ketchup so now like, I don't yeah. eat ketchup. Why? Just, I don't know. It's just like not as good I mean, as it was. Maybe you get some aioli on something. Why <laughs> would you eat ketchup? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um, when you came back to Pakistan, how was that experience exactly in terms of, you know, because you had just graduated from university, you'd come back to a completely different place and um, like, how was it for you? How was the adjustment? I mean, initially it was like, I mean, I, I wonder how much we'll deep dive into this conversation where we'll touch upon mental health, but I mean, it was a severely depressing, especially I was 24, turning 25, or 23, turning 24, one of those, 2013, I don't remember, but it's hard, like, not to have your friends, not to have, and again, I grew up in a massive Pakistani community, so my friends have been my friends since I was born, I was born into them. And our parents are friends, so it's like cousins basically, and it's just literally that community still exists, shout out to them, and it is kind of rough. It was very rough, but I had my sister and my parents, and we sort of, 
we built it up together. And then you get to know the city, you get to know the country, and then slowly and surely you kind of wipe away a bit of that American fear of going outside oh my and embrace the place. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Um, so when you came back to Pakistan, did you live in like Islamabad or did you live in Fendi? Oh, I'm Fendi through and through. Oh my God, Fendi girl all the way. Ralph, I'm wearing Ralph Fendi right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm very Fendi proud. Yeah. Okay, so how was that um, for you? Because well, I also came back from America and then yeah. the adjustment for me was pretty intense because I had never worn chalwar a mm. day in my life. Yeah. So the yeah. first, you know, and I, I resisted to... for many years. Really? I think it was uh, it wasn't until last year like where I was like you are a working woman. Yeah. Get a wardrobe that works in summer. <laughs> um, it was tough. Freedom of mobility is probably the hardest hardest thing. I mean, the first time I went to visit the states, I saved up all my money bought a ticket and I was like, I'm gonna go see my friends, like spend a couple weeks there. There was a day I left the house and I actually sobbed. Like I just started sobbing and I'm not a crier. Like yeah. literally like I should go to therapy. Like I'm not <laughs> okay. adjusted. Uh, but I called my mom, probably the middle of the night yeah. in Bindi, sobbing. And I was like, do you know I'm just standing outside in workout clothes and like, I can't believe this. And the other day it occurred to me that I haven't left my house in six and a half years where I'm not like covered. Fully, yeah. And I understand you have to respect culture, this and that, but like, being offensive to culture by just existing is something yeah. that's really hard to understand. And I think diaspora Pakistani, you know, when they come and they visit, it's like in the car, out of the car, in the restaurant, out of the restaurant, see the family go home. Yeah. It's not, you don't live, you don't experience it. And to like women, the, we're pol self policed so much. I'd say that's one of the biggest adjustments that you have to make. And you know, it's like, oh, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that almost sadder that we get used to being like, this is a problem that I need to put away and yeah. deal with before I leave the house every day. So that mobility, that freedom, and then also my dad thinking like everything's going to result in kidnapping doesn't help. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it doesn't help. It my doesn't. mom thinks that way as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Maybe yeah, because yeah, yeah. my dad's, we couldn't hike in the Margolis for a year. But after we moved here, because me and my sister were like, all right, I have nothing else. Yeah. Let's walk outside. And my dad was like, no, <laughs> I mean, you like, cannot. The thing is, like, um, you know, when we when I lived in America, it was like you could go to the park, you yeah. could go to the mall, you could do whatever you want, yeah. you know, in your limits, of yeah. course. But then here, it's it's, I can't really go outside and have a walk. I have never know? walked around my neighborhood till this day. And the thing is, though, is I, I understand, like, even just hearing me saying it, what we're saying is extremely privileged, right? Yeah. And well, I'm sure we'll get into that. And this is actually, I'm sure you're going to ask me, and it, I'll, I'll probably touch on this again, but there is a privilege to it. And I'm sure even in the States, in Pakistani communities, like I know I was in a more liberal situation than a lot of my contemporaries who I'd meet at like Pakistani dinners and thought like I had it easier than a lot of people. Yeah. And so it's interesting how privilege, it's not that it blinds you, it's like a cruel ignorance, but it is an ignorance. And then when I moved here, I was like, whoa, like, I, like, this is like there's I need girls to, like me yeah. who didn't even get to learn to read be yeah. simply by being girls. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's an extreme example, but unfortunately in our country, is it really that extreme? I don't hmm. know. It's, I think that's a question our viewers can answer. Yeah, like, yeah. I, no, believe me. <laughs> I'm sorry, not to like jump because we'll get into it later, but I did speak about this recently. I'm sure you'll ask me about it. And the comments, I only read it once and like a lot of it's like, then go back. If you yeah. have a problem, and I'm like, that's not the answer. And to say that it's rough living here isn't by means saying that I should be booted out of the country. It's just if I can talk about it, and maybe if it affects one person who can change something in their household, then why not? Even yeah. in my own. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so you came back to Pakistan when you were around 23, 24. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember yeah. that. Yeah, I definitely yeah. turned 25 here. <laughs> so like mid 20s, right? Know. Yeah. Um, so when you came back, uh, how was the the culture around you in terms of the Rishta culture? Because that is like Rishta the prime culture. age, you oh, know, that no. is the prime age. Oh no. So I have an older sister. Um, so the primary focus was always her. But you also have to keep in mind that there's other factors, right? Like she's tall, she's slim. I'm not slim. And I'm sorry, but in Pakistan, that's a huge problem. I mean, it's a yeah, problem all over is. the world, but here yeah. it's literally like a moral failing. Yeah. And people look like they will openly tell you like, Stop eating the gulab yeah, no, and li I've literally had people be like, but look at her, She's like pointing so at my sister. Like, why can't you do what she does? And yeah. um, so for Rishla cults for me, unfortunately, or fortunately, didn't really happen. And another thing that's probably abundantly clear from our short interactions yeah. right together is like, I am who I am. 
And I'm not. No apologies. And I'm. And yeah, I don't think anyone should apologize for it. And again, I had the privilege to become who I am because I had the support of my parents of the com whatever part of the communities yeah. that wanted to support me were in. And I was told very specifically by someone who deals in rishtas that like you're not a conventionally attractive choice. So uh, like at the time I took it, like you were saying, I wasn't cute, and I was like, I'm really cute. Yeah. But it's more the truth. Is like. When I've started disabling, dismantling Rishta culture for what it is, it is very highly stacked against girls. I'm going to say girls you know, because it starts from girlhood. So, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's basically like, to be very honest, my friends and I, because we're of the age, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. and we have to be, you know, properly dressed and, you know, bal chal se, yeah. you know, everything has to be on point, on fleek, you know what I yeah. mean? at all times. And when you they, never know who's looking. Yeah, right? yeah, the thing is that a few of my friends, you know, they, they'd have people over to visit them or wo, they'd feel like, you know, bakre at a exactly. mandi. Exactly. Okay, you It'll know, say, show like, us your nails yeah. or show us your hair yeah. or show, you know, and show so me how skinny you are. part of the privilege I talk about because growing up in my household, I was, you know, I had a, and listen, even now my parents will debate, like, was this the right move? And even I debated sometimes, but marriage was not a thing. Like literally, like for us, it's like, oh, you'd see like a Bollywood movie and you're like, I want to look like Madhuri when I get yeah. married. That was the extent. Because my dad's thing was, if you don't earn your own money, you're not getting married. Like you cannot get married and depend on someone because we've just seen how it ends up. Like that's literally yeah. like bacteria growing for abuse, like from me, I'm telling yeah. whoever's listening. So that was the thing. So when we moved here, I think my parents themselves went into a bit of shock because I ha we had family members being like, listen, you got two spinsters in the making. It's already shocking they're not married at like 23, 25, yeah. 24, 26. Get them out. Like, it, and I mean, it wasn't like they want the best for you. Like, I understand there's a culture that exists, but it was very shocking. And then for my father and mother, even it was like, why are we inviting strangers into our home to survey our child? We don't get to look at their putter, but they yeah. get to look at ours. Yeah. And then they reject us off of things like, well, she was wearing jeans, which is a true thing that once happened. No. Or, you know, like, oh, she sings. But is she going to keep singing after she gets like, so your own son can go skydiving and this and that and travel, but the girl shouldn't. Yeah. And I literally, there was a situation that someone was like, you love to travel and they love to travel. You should meet this girl's like, all right, cool. What a breeding ground for love. Yeah. Uh, goes and meets the dude. He's like, yeah, you know, I travel so much for work and I really need someone to be at home with my parents. This was what? the basis of the marriage. And meanwhile, I have other cousins or friends or whatever, they're guys in their 30s who are like, why am I being introduced to girls in my 20s? Like in their 20s, yeah, sorry, it doesn't 20s. make sense because as I was saying, the culture stacked against girls. It starts from when you're creepybescent yeah. and you're literally like, you're never going to get married if you do this. You're never going to get married if you do that. Don't play sports. Don't do this. Don't Achy do that. Yeah, like you know? good girls are seen and not heard. Good girls clear the table while their brothers, even if they're younger, which you know in Pakistani society, there's a hierarchy of age that exists in our culture. Your little brothers can go play, but you better clear the table. And they start from very young, convincing subtly or overtly young girls that your place is a role of servitude and obedience and to young boys that like your place is of ease like someone needs to make everything else easy for you so that you can go out and succeed i'm not saying men don't have pressure boys don't have pressure but there's a different thing where like a girl is expected to be everything but That's true. only what she's told to be. But if you're more than that, it's like, rukta, yeah. you know, stop. Like, that's too much. Sometimes it feels like they're intimidated or it's just... I hear this word all the time, that, oh, that's intimidating, that's too much. And I'm like, well, then you're a weak person. I've actually <laughs> had, you know, um, well, they're not my friends anymore, but I've had people no, say to my face <laughs> that, you know, you come off as a little intimidating and I don't, I can't really see myself being friends with you because you're too overwhelming. And I'm like... That's the door, girl. You can go. Exactly. Have like, fun. truly, like, if any youths are listening, yeah. <laughs> sorry, the older you get, like, it is so fun to just be like, wait, like, I don't need to accept this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, I'm out. And I think, um, not sorry to go back onto it, but Rich that Culture it really it's... stabbed me when I saw, like, even what people in my own family have gone through, it's like what they had to give up just to become somebody for someone else. And that was really shocking to me because in my house, the mentality was like, and it wasn't like my dad was like, be cute, be a bum. No, it was like, you better be something worth marrying yourself. And like, you should be a partner and you should make your own money and da 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 da. 
So yeah, it was very crazy to me. It was it was one of the things I would say like was a catalyst in me to be like, nah, I gotta, I cannot accept. And I think and this I is a very important thing uh, that the girls in this day and age should kind of really accept for themselves that we are, we may not be, you know, equally in terms, equal in terms of, you know, biologically or mentally because everyone is different and, you know, biologically we're different, men and women. But the thing is that when it comes to social um, equality, when it comes to financial equality, I think we do deserve a fair chance to fight for what's right. And Million if you're not percent. getting what you deserve, then you need to raise your voice. You need to fight for it. I would agree. So I agree with you. But again, we're privileged people. Yeah. Like we're sitting here, we're educated, we're speaking fluent English. Like we already have a leg up just from that, like to be honest. But I understand what you're saying. And I feel like that's why things like Orth March and stuff are so important. Just knowing the organizers, they literally will bus out to the villages, get to rural areas, hit these schools. And they're like, this is for you also. But trying to change that yeah, mindset is culture, very difficult. And it's it's not just South Asian culture, like Pakistani culture, it's South Asian culture. It's youth extend, you can go to other places it all exists i get it the patriarchal mentality but there's such a level of fear of going against that and, then like, and we don't know what that is like let me tell you if in my house my parents told me today you're not going to go on that youtube channel as our daughter you know what i'd do i'd walk out i'd get a kareem i'd pay for it myself and i'd be on this youtube channel yeah but there's some girls who are going to be like I can't. And boys, I literally I can't. will not be able to leave the house. They might pull me out of school. They might do this. They might literally marry me off. And it sounds like this is fantastical over exaggerations. This is so real. It is this so is. real. And it's every story you hear. It's not even remotely exaggerated. It's not just on television. It's no. not just the dramas that you're watching. It's, no. it's, it's happening to people in real life. Real life. It's it's bonkers. It is bonkers, crazy. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. you you discussed um, uh, a little bit of feminism, right? So now my question is that for our male allies, okay. for those who support feminism mm -hmm. or support you know equality, um, what kind of message would you have for them? How I, can they play their role in terms of empowerment and yeah? Um, I don't really know how to. So I think there's a lot of conversation around feminism where we're like, how can we include the guys? Like, let's let the guys in. And I understand it, and it's necessary because feminism is for men, gender, non-binary, it's for everybody. It's literally just human equality. Yeah. Um, it's just the way it's packaged is very hard for people to swallow, I guess. So to be, a, I think, a good male ally is really as basic as just listening and showing up and practicing what you preach. But if you're gonna sit here and tell me that like rape culture is bad, but then like laugh on the internet when someone like makes a rape joke, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to draw the lines there. But really, I, for me personally, my feminism is primarily focused on women, gender non-binary, queer people, getting them and their voices in uh, first and men supporting second. So basically, uh, the reason why I asked this question yeah. was that a lot of my male friends are allies of yeah. feminism and they support the heck out of, you know, yeah. women. So Good. like when when it comes to my show, they're always, you know, watching or they're they're subscribed or whatever in the in the, the smallest or, you know, yeah. minuscule ways. So when they start talking uh, to on Instagram pages or responding to comments, they get shut down or they yeah. get blocked. Yeah. Because they're trying to understand well, but then somehow it comes off in a very negative way. Well, I'll tell you why. Because there's a lot of, you know what unpaid emotional labor is? Unpaid emotional labor is the fact, like, like I mentioned earlier, that like boys are sort of like play games, succeed in school, whatever. Don't Sports, worry about the yeah. house. The house is managed by the women. My problem with male allies who constantly are like, Saba, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, can you explain this? I'm not your teacher. I'm not your professor. I'm not your mother, I'm not your wife, I'm not your sister. Yeah. And none of these people should really have to do it either. I understand you're trying to learn, but learn by observing, by researching, by trying. Anytime I post something to do with, you know, violence against women, if your instinct is to be like, but hey, I've never hit a woman, so can you not include, what do you mean? You know it's an epidemic. Like intellectually, if you are not aware, then I want to know where you live, where you can hide from this information, because yeah. I'd love to take a vacation there. But it's not reality. Like, you know that it's stacked against women. And when you come in, def and in a way, it comes off 
is that once again, even though we're providing you with the facts, you're questioning it. And if you really have these questions, the same internet you use to ask me to hold your hand through feminism. And guide you through, guide you. yeah. Why can't you use that same internet to ask these questions, mm, you know? Maybe short attention span. <laughs> maybe, but I'll tell you, I had a very good awakening conversation with some, one of my friends about this because he messaged me once being like, so much of what you post is like, about like men and like where they're going wrong and da 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 and like not all of us are this way. So if you're not that way, why are you having to make it clear to me? Your actions make that clear. But by questioning me to not say these things or asking me that like, well, what about the good guys? What about your dad? I'm like, my dad doesn't need that validation. You should not need it either because you're already doing the right thing, which is treating me and other women like human beings. That's the baseline. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah. And like if and if we're approaching what unfortunately feels like and possibly is the majority of the world, we're not just talking about Pakistani men here, the world where it's like boys shouldn't cry, um, uh, women shouldn't do this, uh, no one's allowed to decide what they do with their bodies, yeah. da, da 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 we own you, your wife is owned, your daughters are owned. That's what this is addressing is that why don't you view us as humans? And if you already view us as humans, I don't have to apologize to you about what, I mean, I'm so, I just don't get it. Because every time a man attacks someone, or do I ask every man in the room to explain themselves? But when I draw attention to that, every man in the room's like, I'm sitting here and I'm smiling at you. So what's your problem? And I'm like, what do you mean? Allow us to bring awareness without making it a personal affront if it really doesn't apply to you. If that, that makes that's, sense. That's, that, that does make sense, yeah. but I, I don't want to say too much right now because <laughs> it might, you know, be a little conflicting. Yeah. But um, yeah, so let's talk about what really is feminism. Okay. Because there's so many definitions, there, there have been so many waves. There, I think there have been about four major waves, and this is the fifth wave, I, I think, I'm not sure. Mm. But I think this is the fifth wave, wave that's coming up. And a lot of the people, men, women, you know, like a lot of people don't know what the true definition of feminism is. But in your opinion, what is the definition of feminism? It is the equality of humanity across the board. No matter where you land, you are equal. And that is basically it. But I, see, yeah. that's, the, that's the thing that a lot of people don't really understand. Well, equal. here's the, okay. In so, which way, specifically? So for example, Men are more likely to be hired for jobs. Men are more likely to be paid more. Men are more likely to be taken seriously. Men's testimony is given more respect. Men are inheriting property. Men control the lives of the women. They're women. Which is basically property. Which is property. We yeah. become property. We are objectified. Um, you know, I don't know how many words I can use, but okay, the villainization of women. A woman who is Well, oh, let's not and, talk about that yeah. because there's a recent drama that just ended and uh, I'm so glad it's ended. Just, yeah. I'm so glad. I'm glad it's ended, but yeah. I'm sad that it's sold out theaters across yeah. the country for people to watch it. I'm sad that that final episode is still playing in yeah. theaters. And that's what, why feminism is, why I'm so happy that, you know, in Pakistan, and by the way, the feminism movement in Pakistan- It's global. It's as old as Pakistan. That's what I mean. Like since Pakistan became Pakistan, there have been Orth marches. There has been, yes. you know, during Eighth March every year. This is not new. Yeah. What is new is the mobilization. What is new is the empowerment to say enough. Is I enough. Think. Yeah. And the fact that you have Pakistan has incredible, incredible women and people working towards this, and they're being vocal. They have the strength to do it. We have the platforms to do it. So what feminism is is saying that me and my brother should have the same opportunities, the same freedoms, and the same chances. Not because I am biologically female and he is biologically male should have nothing to do with it. And that is unfortunately so far away, so far away from becoming real. And I mean, they say, oh, the gender wage gap will close in about 200 or so years. What? In this country, you don't need, you have an employment wage gap. You have so many gaps. Yeah. And it's just, that's the thing is how you're raised even. Yeah. Feminism is everything. And it's just asking that every human should have the same fundamental rights, chances, opportunities. So that would be my broad line definition. All right, so um, the 2020 Earth March 
what is what is you know since you're involved in the org well, launches? Well, I'm not involved this year that you're much not? to be honest. Right. I was actually out of I was literally out of the city every time they had meetings. I will definitely be attending. Um, and it's it's this, I believe it's around the same thing. And every year they're just trying to mobilize further to get more women and people who want to support this Orth March and who it affects involved. That's my understanding of it. I do know right now that Orth March is looking for like young artists to come and turn and work. So I think they're on that right now. All I'm right. hoping they do that Chilean battle. I don't know if you saw it went viral. It's a group of Chilean women outside of a. Um, I think Supreme Court or something, some court case was being ruled on and they did this chant that went viral that was like Me Too really yeah. affiliated. I'm hoping somehow that one of the chant, one of the marches here does it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, fingers Orange crossed, you know, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's this post on Instagram that's been circulating since, I think since the past two years and it's it's really caught my attention because mm -hmm. every time I see it, I kind of like it yeah. times 10, you know, just tap, 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 tap. Uh, the quote is basically, women are not rehabilitation centers for emotionally traumatized men. Yeah. What is your take on that? Okay. I think it's similar to what you asked me earlier about male allies and whatnot, but I do think particularly our Thank culture, you. if we want to talk about Pakistan, if you even want to talk about the drama culture, whatever, our art, there's a lot of emphasis on like the suffering woman. Yeah, who, the like, damsel in distress. Yeah, the, the, not even damsel, but just the suffering woman who like brings her man out of the darkness and da da da. And, like, oh my god! And again, it's this. this so I'll I'll give you an example. I'm a publicish. I mean, I'm like a small time nobody. I don't even know why I was involved, but I'm happy to be here. But I'm like, please don't think I think I'm something. I know I'm very much just a well. Person. In my eyes, you're like but, everything. But so. you know, one time I was messaging this person. I thought they were cool, I was cool, and I was like, oh, you know, whatever, I never had a rich thought this might even go somewhere. And then suddenly they like slam this other per I don't even know this person, like we're literally just talking about travel, music. They slam this woman who's somewhere affiliated in their life. And I was like, look, good riddance, have a nice day, I'm uncomfortable talking to you, you should really consider therapy, you shouldn't talk about women this way. And I get this novel of like, you couldn't explain that to me nicely, like you could have talked to me. Why should I? It goes back to that same thing. Women are supposed to be all suffering, quiet about it. And then if so, a man is suffering, we're supposed to be the ones that heal them, that guide them to the light. And then once we get there, what happens? I don't know. Are yeah. we rewarded? Is someone looking out for us? I just don't understand who made that a thing. But it's because, and I do think feminism is, is, it's literally like, can we allow men to fail and have yeah. emotions and be human sometimes too? And I think that even falls in there. It, it, uh, I mean, like this reminds me of the time when I was in university and a friend of mine was going through a very, very difficult situation and he, he just couldn't cry. Yeah. Because, you know, the friends were sitting with him and he, he's like, I, I really need to cry and I need to go, but I can't, I can't be myself in front of these people yeah, they're because they're literally they're not like gonna, traumatized yeah, they're from not a very young it. age yeah and um there was this one of our neighbors uh you know pakistan's neighbors created an uh, created an ad that boys like nahi rote yeah and i think it went viral like all I over feel social like I know media it. Yeah, yeah and um that really resonated with me that you know we don't give our you know brothers or cousins or fathers or uncles or whatever that opportunity to cry i mean Actually, if their parent yeah. like if their parent dies they're not really able to show that emotion because they have this because they have to they, take yeah, over they the have next to take role. over now it's there i do it's what you don't you find it interesting that like a man dies and then everyone's looking to the son and it's like well his wife who raised the sun is right there. Yeah. Or call it, but sorry, you asked this about allies earlier yeah. and I forgot to say it and I do want to say it about male allies. Particularly if you have siblings, you have sisters in your home, a true ally who goes out at 10 at night, enjoys hanging out with his friends, da da da, comes home. Like, did you, do you ever ask your, do you, like, does your sister have the same freedoms as you? Yeah. I think that if you're in a situation where you're in, close contact with women, like your sibling, whatever, that's one way an ally can put in some work. Is And I think that's the know. first step would be to communicate. Yeah. That's what I think a male ally should be mm. like, is then there's this ridiculousness. Like I'm sure your parents would be like, why aren't you going out? Well, make a stand for your sibling. Because really I talked about this on my show this week. 
<clears throat> is we're going to dictate, we decide how the culture shifts. Because we're the generate, right? Each generation that comes, they flip how the culture is each year of people that happens. Yeah. And so I think that's just really important. As an ally, I wanted to say it, I forgot to say it earlier, so I just wanted to throw that in. And like the funny thing is that uh, my cousins are all older than me. Yeah. So they've kind of paved this path for me, which yeah. I really respect them for. So thank you, cousins. <laughs> yeah, you know? Um, because they probably didn't have the same liberties that I have. Yeah. And uh, they were told to be you know, straight A students, and they were told to be, oh, you can't go out anywhere, you can't have guy friends, you can't do this, you mm. can't do that. Urgh, crazy, right? And then here I am, you know, 30 years later, and I have all of these privileges, which yeah. I'm really grateful for, but then, you know, they're the pioneers who laid down that front for me. Yeah. So, a Good huge thank that. you to them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so like I watched your TED talk and that was, you know, super funny for me and super interesting. I like I'm, I was living for it. <laughs> um, so you basically gave me a question to ask you. Okay, how do you see the future of Pakistan and in your future are girls included? Now, I wanted to hear more about this. So yeah. could you like elaborate? So at the risk of sort of like cycling what I've already said before, but it's just um, I don't know. Because in Pakistan, I feel there are days we make immense strides and I'm just like, yes, we're doing it, we're killing it. And then there's days that terrify me. Like we just mentioned a drama, which is killing it. I'm saying the numbers for this thing are insane. sold out. Like, and there's such a love of the villainous woman and like the marivi bachari oh that like God. accompanies it I there's nothing you. but there's no humanity to women there's no in the middle there's no yeah i made a mistake and i can apologize and i can move on i can have a job and also not cheat on my husband believe it or not yeah. it happens so what do i think i think that people who have voices and platforms if they use those to elevate other people which i hope i do then maybe it'll continue to change that culture will change because Pakistan has no future if their girls are not included. They're not, I mean, there are some of these sports stars. You look at Hadra Khan, national footballer, Krishma Ali, national footballer. You're like, the, there is talent, there is drive, there is ambition. And yet we don't have sports programs for girls. Why? Or scholarships or for them. Or scholarships for them, or funding into that, nothing. Why? Our Pakistan cricket team for women has made us proud over and over and over again. But do Who they cares? have the same value? Yeah, not at all. As the and so, and it's not just even sports, but sports, sports is an autonomy. Sports is confidence and it's ignored. Then you have, I mean, sure, someone like me can like bark all day because what are my consequences really? I mean, please, no one make consequences for me <laughs> who isn't directly involved in my life. But like, I don't know if this was the way all girls got, to, even if they don't like, you know, they just the freedom, just the choice, if that was encouraged, sure. But Pakistan cannot be a successful place, cannot be a prosperous place if it's women are not right next to them. And I believe it for a fact. And it's I proof mean, if you look at other countries where women are But the there, thing is yeah. that Muhammad Ali Jinnah had Fatma Jinnah by his side. Absolutely. So why and can't we, you know, stand together and I lift each other Pakistan up? I just think Pakistan has just gone through so many remixes, you know, and like we're in a very strange remix right now. <laughs> I, I would call it a bit of a... Mashup? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit strange. As an RJ, as I know about music, but... Yeah, I mean, my ho I have so much hope for Pakistan because the people of Pakistan are good. Yeah. And they want good and they want a, a bit bomb country and like, is it like a good country? Yeah. <laughs> and they want good things. Like we're just human beings. You know, we just happened to be Pakistani. So I just hope, I mean, if you can look up to other people and other people's countries and their women, like Jacinda, New Zealand, everyone like lost oh God, their minds yeah. and she threw a scarf on her head. I'm just saying like, give that same love to the girls who are just trying, yeah. you know, so yeah. All right, so um, let's kind of uh, move on to like some delicious food, <laughs> which is uh, chicken alfredo and um, egg fried rice. All right. Now, <laughs> you can please help yourself to whatever you like um, and... Um, will you also be eating? Yeah, I didn't I'm know gonna, there was gonna be an eating portion. Oh, oh. There, oh yeah, so <laughs> we can just dig right in, right? Okay, cool. So, I'll probably go rice. I am rice. gluten free, so oh I my cannot goodness. go pasta. But oh no. Yeah. Can you like so, tell okay. me a little bit about being gluten free? Because oh, I don't yeah, know what, what sure. it is. Oh, I talk about it incessantly. I get yeah. gluten free all day. <laughs> Feminism, gluten free, Rap music, curly hair. 
you got me for like four hours. Okay. True. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No. I and conspiracy theories. Those okay. also as we okay. talked. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. You have so to first take fill me and like, like okay. when Putin so is. Okay. So I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's PCOS. Very common. It's like one in a like I think. 10, 13 women, something like that. Very, yeah. very common, very common all over the world. Doesn't matter the demographic. Basically, my hormones are like nuts. And uh, my body doesn't process uh, sugar or stuff like that as well. No. So I've known since 2012 that I should not eat gluten. But the thing is, gluten is great. Gluten's in everything yeah. good yeah. and wonderful. Can you eat cookies? No. So when I moved to Pakistan, I had like no friends. So it was very easy. Yeah, like I was like, easy. I'm gonna eat paleo. Yeah. I didn't even need to touch gluten. I dropped 65 pounds without ever going into a gym. I don't know how much that is in kg, but it's a lot. Yeah. I think like 27, something like that. Oh. 30 maybe. Wow. And then I made friends and I was like, no, nope, oh, gluten's no. great. I'm gonna eat dumplings every day. Yeah. And then, but recently I had, I got the flu three times in a row. Oh. Okay, so now this is like, we're seven years, no, sorry, eight years since I've been told to stop eating gluten. I got the flu three times in a row last year. I know you probably know it was like running yeah. around the samba like crazy. The third time, I got it the same day that I also got food poisoning and the same day that oh. I had LASIK eye surgery so like I couldn't see. And I think, so I had, like I treated it much more dramatically than I needed to, but I was like, God gave me one body and I will treat it with respect going forward. Oh so since that day, I have not had a bite of gluten willingly. I had one by accident and, I, and it hurt my stomach. And um, yeah, so now I'm gluten free. And, I, and I'm actually like, PCOS people go hard. So they eat paleo, which is like no grains, no this, no that. It's literally fruit, vegetables, and meat. And so I'm technically supposed to be that way, but I was like, I gotta go slow. So I'm still no, eating I'm rice. Not and that stuff, adventurous so with food. I don't, you watch like, mukbang and I think like face dive into a lasagna, just sobbing. So I should eat something along the way. But okay. yeah, so, um, I feel let's strange move on, eating uh, on camera. To our, uh, you know, quick fun segment. Cool. It's basically never have I ever. All right. And uh, you gotta give me these answers fast. Okay. Like, super duper fast. I okay? hope. So never have I ever. Change my car's tires. I have. You have? Okay. Yeah. Never have I ever hitchhiked. No. Never have I ever broken a bone. Sort of. <laughs> oh, okay. Never have I ever sent a snap or a text that I've instantly regretted. Oh, thousands of times. Oh, God. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Never have I ever made a horrific mistake on my show, Full Disclosure, uh, which you know, is from five to seven on Saturday and Sunday. Actually, no, not a horrific one, no, no. no. Nothing that like, yeah, thank God, I'll, I'll, let's hope it stays. Knock on wood, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, never have I ever been trapped in an elevator. I have. Crazy. Not for too long, though, no. it was right. pretty quick. Yeah. Never have I ever lied to my parents about staying at a friend's house. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Looking right at them, yes. Okay, never have I ever gone to a party and instantly regretted it. Oh my God, all the time. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Uh, never have I ever spied on my neighbors. No. No. Okay. Never have I ever uh, been harassed by aunties at a shadi or a funeral. I have, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. The latter at a funeral. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What an insane place, yeah. you know? All right. So uh, the second segment that we have in store is uh, Guilty Pleasure. All right. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Again, super fast. I really love how you're conducting yeah. this. You have the best energy. I'm so into it. Aww, yeah. I'm so happy. Okay, so uh, guilty pleasure, super fast. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Okay. okay. Focus? Yeah. Okay, favorite show. Favorite show? Yeah. Guilty pleasure yeah, wise? Guilty pleasure. I don't feel guilty about any of them. I guess mukbang on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't feel guilty about any of those. Okay. Every show I watch, I stand by. Okay. <gasps> no, I have an answer. Okay. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing, but there's Ink Master. It's a reality television show, tattooing. tattooing. Oh, yes. And I only watch the clips on YouTube and yeah. they're terrible. And it's great television. It, yeah, it is. I mean, great television in the sense of like, the I worry ever. for the world, but, I get, but I'll lose hours of my life being like, that's a, I get it. Like that tattoo show. Oh, I'm I not a TikTok lost. person. No, at, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Crazy. Anyway. Okay. Guilty pleasures again. Back to it. Weird food combination. Caramel popcorn with nacho cheese at the movies, specifically. <laughs> Acha, your favorite or guilty pleasure artist? Who I'm guilty about? Drake. No. I know. Lately, it's hard. We'll get into it. I'm not guilty about. I'm sort of guilty about it. Him and Kanye. 
um, your guilty pleasure uh, Pakistani drama? Oh, I really liked it. Wasn't I mean it's a comedy, but those Annie Kiagi Barat. It's like pretty old now. I think over 10 years. And there was a whole. Did you know what those were? There was like series of them, like Azar Kiagi, Iski Kiagi, Kuski Kiagi, and I. We watched them in the states. Like my mom was like, "Yo, I brought these dramas in, and I loved them." And I actually got to talk to one of the actors a bit ago for my show. He was like, "Oh, I really like your show," and I was like. I have known who you are for like decades, yeah. Oh my god, okay. Your guilty pleasure smell? Gasoline. Like at a gas station, I'll stand outside the car, I'm like, yes. And a char. <gasps> I love a char. Your guilty pleasure drink? Diet Coke. I know it's poison, I cannot give it up. I try all the time, I threaten myself, my family, I cannot give it up. <laughs> Office gossip, uh, celebrity gossip or family gossip? <laughs> family. Really? Yeah. No, acha, tick. Okay, uh, your guilty pleasure weird song. Uh, honestly, I know it's a lame answer, but I don't feel guilty about anything I listen to. I think. Thank you so much for joining, Saba. Thank you I for had the time of my life, fun. and I'm so glad that you came out to visit. And uh, thank you guys for watching at home or wherever you guys are. Bahut maza aaya aaj ke show pe, and uh, you guys can catch us. Um, on our social media pages at city2.tv and uh, Sundown officially has their own Facebook page so you guys can catch you know all the updates on that and uh, you guys can totally catch Saba on her show Full Disclosure on Saturday and Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. and a huge thank you to Tangelo's uh, Cafe and Grill um, it's located in Islamabad in Blue Area so you guys have to check it out their chicken alfredo is superb you guys need to have this okay and uh, yeah, that's the show that we have for you today. Take care, Alafis.